Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a kind of show and tell of something I've been working on. And it is kind of coming up with an inventory insert to document an inventory of my stuff. And hopefully that will make sense later in the video. Let me just start off with this for here. This is my ink journal. I've shown it before in previous videos. It's a place for me to document my fountain pen inks and fountain pen inventories. The, what I started it this year and what I did was I created my own insert for me to write down each one of the fountain pen inks that I own and some notes on it. This is the one that I made for my fountain pen inks. And I also created not just my fountain pen inks, but one for my fountain pens or my pen inventory. Here is an insert for my fountain pens inventory, and it's similar to the one for my fountain pen inks. Now, I had so much fun doing this that I realized that I wanted to make more of these types of insert. I could, because I have rings, I can take out the paper and I can move it around as I like. Once I figured out how to design the inserts, I decided to apply that to something else, which I had been keeping an inventory of. And that is my bullet journal supplies. So before I get to what I came up with, I have to show you what I was doing previously. This is a summary of my bullet journal supplies. And by bullet journal supplies, I mean generally anything stationary, bullet journal, arts, planner related. And these are the categories that I came up with last year. You can see that I've documented all of the purchases I made in all of these categories per month and per category. So by the end of the year, I should have an entire page filled with numbers. Now, this is just a summary. The details for this, I go into more detail in this kind of table format. You can see here I have to turn it around just so there's more space. And this is all of the decorations that I bought in 2020. I also did this, or I started doing this in 2019. That means I had a bullet journal for 2019 and I had a very similar table to this one in here where I totaled all of my purchases for 2019. Now I really quickly realized by the time I got to 2020, that I didn't like having to have two different inserts for me to see my entire inventory. And if I go into next year, then I would have a third insert or a third notebook, which I would have to look up every single time I wanted to see when I bought something or how much I bought it for. So I decided to move the contents of this Bullet Journal Supplies 2019 and Bullet Journal Supplies Inventory for 2020 into a, another ring bound insert and the ring bound insert i put it into my a5 sized ring binder so let me show you what is in here so here we have my bullet journal supplies inventory it has a table of contents which is the same eight categories that i had in my previous bullet journal supplies inventory oh before i forget this background here it has kind of this outline of different stationary supplies i got it off of a site called free pick and i will put the details of the creator down below i'm allowed to use it for free with attribution anyways this is the table of contents and then we get into the details so for the details, I've also put it in a landscape format, just so it's easier to write on, like this. So for each of the categories that I have in my table of contents, I have a piece of paper for it. Here you can see at the bottom it says ring binders, and this is category 1. Let's go to category 2, Traveler's Notebooks, and here I have a second page printed out of Travel's Notebooks because I think I have enough for that, the second page. Here's paper, notebooks, 
Second page for notebooks, fountain pens, second page for fountain pens, and so on and so forth. And let me start off with, let's say, fountain pens. We have here at the top a place for me to put the date. And what I mean the date is, it's more of a date range. So if, imagine this was filled out. And I, I maybe I should have filled it out beforehand, but let's say I started this on January 1st, 2020. And then I put this on March 5th, 2020. June 5th, 2020. And then I would, then I would write 1, 1, 20, and June 5th, 20. And that's just a quicker way for me to see how, which dates were on this page. But let's say I, I filled out this entire spread and I have the total here. Oh, first I, I can document what it is I bought, the date that I bought it, any other notes. And the last two columns are for numbers. This one is FX or foreign exchange. So if I bought it in a different currency, then I would write it here. And then if I translate that foreign currency into my own currency, then I would write down the actual amount I paid in my own currency. So let's say I filled out this entire spread and I get to the bottom. I would write down, I would total down all of these purchases and then I would write down the subtotal here. So I'm just going to make it up. Let's say I spent $100. And then because this would be the first page that I'm working on, I would leave carry forward as blank and then I would write $100 here. This would be the end of page number one. Then I'm going to have to start filling out the rest of my fountain pen inventory on this page, which is kind of like page number two of the fountain pens. So what I would do is I would take that $100 from the total on this page and I would write it here and the carry forward number so here we have $100. Then I would go back to the top here and I would see this little checkbox here. I would check it off to say that this number has been moved to the next page. Then I would fill out this. So let's say this was June 5th. So I bought something on June 6th, 2020. And I would go all the way down to, I don't know, October 11th, 2020. Then I would write down all of these dates are just made up. But let's say I filled this up and then I get another subtotal, which is $200. Then I would add these two numbers together and now I have $300. Then I would flip forward to the page, the next page, which is still fountain pens. I would write the carry forward from here of $300. And I come back to the previous page and then I would make a check mark to say I've carried that forward. And that's how I plan on doing my bullet journal supplies inventory. I really did have a lot of fun doing this because I can design it specifically for me, specifically for what I want to keep track of. And then because it's now in a ring binder format instead of a bound notebook format, then it's easier for me to rearrange as needed or add. Really, the more important thing is for me to be able to add more to each category as I need to and be able to see all of the purchases I made over a several year time period. So that's been a lot of fun. Next, I'm gonna show you another type of inventory insert I made. And this time I'm going the opposite direction. Now for my other collection, I'm moving from a ring bound to a bound notebook. That was really more of a challenge to myself to see if I can make my own little insert here and print it out cut it and bind it together. Because all of the inserts that I've made so far have been of blank pages, where it's easy to just kind of cut it and bind it. But this one is printed, and that takes a little bit more work. 
to print out a printed booklet and bind it. And I, I figured it out. So this is great. And I still haven't shown it to you yet. It is my beauty inventory. Again, I will show you before I get into my beauty inventory insert. Again, I will show you what I was doing before. Here's my personal reminder. It's a Philofax Finsbury. I was using this for a couple of months in 2019. And I started doing my beauty inventory in here in a ring bound because it was just like my reasoning for the bullet journal supplies inventory. I wanted the ring bound because I could add and remove pages as I needed to. Let me show you what I did last year. I used the paper that came with the Filofax binder. And for each kind of beauty inventory, I had a different page. So last year, I guess I called it the skincare inventory. And this category is hand creams. Now this one is a lot less, there's a lot less detail than my bullet journal supplies inventory. You'll notice that there's no real numbers in here. It is just a list. The list is all the hand creams I own. I put a little dash here for every single hand cream I have. And you'll notice that if I open the hand cream, then I put a check mark next to it, like that. If I've used up the hand cream, then I would cross it off. Same here, and cross it off. And so that's just a lot more simpler. You can just see at a glance, with by looking at the check marks that aren't crossed off, the things that I have that are in use and opened, and the things that I still have to use. So here is my face moisturizer. So there's a ton more. Toners, facial oils, facial serums, and so on. The problem with this is, even though it works pretty great, is that a lot of these things that I have, like you will see that it looks like a lot, but a lot of them are really sample size. There are these little foil packets, which is a, like a one-time use item. And I wanted to be able to separate out the full size items or the kind of bigger sample size items from those foil packages, because otherwise it looks like I have a ton of moisturizers, but really I have a ton of little foil packets. And so I decided that I was going to redo this. I was going to design my own insert, print it out, do it the same as the other one. The reason why I decided not to go with the ring bound route is because I feel like the personal size is a great place for me to do this type of more basic inventory because it's just a list with a bunch of check marks or crosses off right it's not that complicated that it would need all the space of an a5 binder with the different numbers and dates and so on it's a great size and that's why i continued using this up until this year but the problem with this is this is the only reason why I'm opening up this personal ring binder. This is the only thing I use it for for this year, and that's for my skincare inventory. So I decided to move it out of the personal rings, and I decided I didn't want to put it in the A5 rings, because that would take up... It's just too much space on one A5 piece of paper for this, so I decided to move it to the same size that I'm using for my bullet journal and my other inserts, and that's B6. That brings me back to this. I've created my own little insert for my beauty inventory. Here it is, and this is my beauty inventory. It is in the traveler's notebook right now, so I'm gonna take it out of the traveler's notebook first. We have the same kind of format as my bullet journal supplies inventory where there's this uh, background here and this is also an image i took from free pick and i will also credit the creator of this of these graphics and again we have another table of contents it's similar to the bullet journal supplies inventory we have all the different kind of beauty categories here and i've included mostly skincare and some hair care. Then on the right we have the page number because 
This insert, I decided to make it with numbered pages. So I handwrite the number that corresponds to each category. Now I haven't finished filling this out, but I did start just to give you a better idea. I mean, I did start filling it out. So, first, so here we have page the first two pages, page two and three. But I'll come back to this later. Maybe I should start off with a blank page. At the top, we have a space for the category. We write down the category of skincare that we're on. Then we have just like a blank space here for me to put the list. And then two columns here. FS stands for full size and SS stands for sample size. So both, both sides of each page are the same. So now I flip back to this cleansers page. This is cleansers and this is face scrubs. I have listed out all of my cleansers here and if they're full size then I check the full size column and if they're like a smaller size or a deluxe sample size then I put it in this column. And the, these are the two face cleansers that I have open and am using and this one, these ones are the ones that I'm waiting to be used. That's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. The kind of indicators follows the bullet journal method which I've been using in my bullet journal as well so it's very intuitive for me that I don't really even need a key and I haven't finished up anything in 2020 so I haven't crossed anything out but let's say I finished up this Marcel cleansing gel if I finished it up then I would just cross it out like that and then continue on so I really like this um, we'll see I haven't finished filling it out like I said I did print it on a graph paper or square grid paper and that's what I have here. This is the Muji planted tree paper. You can see that I bought a whole stack of them. It's a hundred sheets and it's already got the grid printed on it. It's like a faint grid so that means I did not have to print out individual lines um, for my beauty inventory so at the back I also had some blank spaces where there's no columns whatsoever I was thinking of doing a summary of maybe the tracking the number of items that I used during the entire year because I like seeing that kind of statistics then it goes into my travelers notebook so I can, I, I can keep it kind of grouped in with the rest of my Traveler's Notebooks inserts. That's it for this video. I really did have a lot of fun designing my ink journal inventory and now my bullet journal supplies inventory and then my beauty inventory. If you have any questions about how I came up with this system or if you wanted to do one for yourself, then you can feel free to ask me. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!